Hello folks, welcome to the channel where I talk about web, node and developer productivity related tools. Today I want to give you a glimpse of why lang attribute is important onto your HTML document. Okay, so let's let's take a look at what does this actually do, right? So here if you see this is actually telling that okay, it's a English language document. What does this mean? It means the content, not the code, but the content that user is going to see is in English language. Similarly, here you can see that it's ES. So it's telling the browser that the content is in Spanish language. Uh, why do you or why should you define this? There are multiple reasons. First is to give very good user experience. So suppose you are a global uh, uh, product right you have a global product that has online presence and there are multiple uh, sets of user that are actually going to come onto your site so you can't assume that everyone knows english right mostly in us uh, some part of asia and some part of uk might be very well aware of english but uh, european countries like spanish spain uh, French, France, and other uh, language people, they don't, they are not that well versed with English. So you need to support uh, the language, right? Now, uh, when you are into your initial phase of developing your product, you can't essentially have everything going out to your customer in one go. In that case, what you can do is you can leverage the browser's built in translation functionalities. What do I mean by browsers built in translation functionality? So you with that, okay? So if I go to uh, 18andemo.search.sh slash es.html, as this page loads, you will see that Chrome prompts me whether I want to see the translation of the page into English, right? How does Chrome know that this is my native language? Uh, Chrome knows it from two places, okay? First is uh, Chrome, when you install Chrome or any browser, they take a look at your system preferences. In my system preference, I have English, uh, US English as a preferred language, uh, and that gets inherited into your browser. So, how do you find out what is the default language of your browser? You can go to console and see navigator.language. You can see here that it's ENUS. Now, how does browser know that they need to translate it, right? There are two ways. First one, let's take a look at the request here. When it is requesting the uh, page from the server, it is sending in the language, the preferred language of the user that is uh, on the current browser. Now, when browser parses uh, the HTML, it comes to know that, okay, the language is defined to be something different than what the user has preferred preference on, right? User has preference on ENUS, but the uh, returned HTML, so you can even go here and see the returned HTML, it has a ES. That's when browser figures out, okay, now uh, in order to give a good user experience, uh, I need to define or uh, prompt or to the user whether they want to do the translation it may happen that user is very much familiar with Spain, spanish and they can decline but browser prompts this because my preferred language is english uh, had it not been the case it wouldn't have prom uh, prompted me so let's take a look at the english case okay so if I simply go to I18n and I go to index.html, it won't prompt me. Why? Because the language uh, of the document is in US and the language that I prefer is also in US. So it won't prompt me. That's obvious. They, they should not prompt for the translation, right? So this is why it is very important uh, and you can leverage internationalization uh, browser browser translation features especially in chrome because google translate is very good right apart from that there is one thing where 
uh, where you should take care of such things, right? So here, if you go on to this site, which is a W3 standardization site, you can see that these are actually uh, uh, language specific names, right? This is, uh, Espanol is nothing but the native language uh, name uh, for the Spanish, right? So even if my uh, whole page is in English, you should always show that uh, the the language which you want to translate uh, should always be into the native language. So here is where uh, the things are very useful as a lang attribute. So if I inspect this, you can see that uh, I have a lang attribute defined on this, right? So here you can see that the language is en, but on this anchor tag, the language is es. Why? Although the whole page is English, but the content inside this uh, particular anchor tag is English, uh, sorry, Spanish, right? Uh, and here is where it, it really helps uh, the screen readers and others as well uh, where, on how to pronounce the, uh, the characters or the wordings, right? Because there are different dialects uh, into each language. So, the screen reader uh, try to uh, adhere to that and on top of that what you can do is you can see that here must be somewhere title defined here is the title defined so if i hover on this uh, you can see that it tells me it's spanish so if i am not a spanish person i still would come to know that this is if i click on this the whole text is going to change into spanish uh, thing right so you can now see that everything is changed, right? Uh, the title is changed. Now, if the content appears, uh, let's be here for that, but the content will appear into Spanish again, right? So this is very important uh, to leverage some of the browser's built-in capabilities rather than uh, building everything on your own. Uh, and especially uh, if you see the Chrome's uh, uh, market share it's quite huge right so you can anyways leverage that that's all i had to, to share in this video uh, it's not a big video i know but yeah that's all cool thank you see you in the next one